good day. <coughs> so, uh, in this lecture, we will discuss the network topology. Okay. Now, what do you mean by a network topology? So, just uh, let us just have a quick recap of uh, what uh, we had learned last time. Basically, a computer network would be a number of nodes which are connected by some communication link, all right. So, uh, so there is some kind of a what uh, we usually call a graph, okay. So, this graph has certain structure. So, we talk about the structure. Now, this structure has an implication about how we will go about communicating. Uh, as I said that it is in general not feasible to have one to one communication between each pair of nodes, okay. that is not possible at all. So, what kind of structure that means what there is nodes connected in which manner uh, that is the uh, subject matter of discussion today. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, a network may be represented as a graph as I said nodes representing computers or network devices like switches, routers etcetera and the links represent communication links. Modes of communication may be broadcast or point to point, we have uh, discussed this. Okay. <coughs> now, um, now, there are various uh, first let us talk about the so called LAN topology, uh, by LAN you remember is uh, the local area network and the local area network topologies are um, well three are very common star ring and a bus okay uh, so we will just uh, look at all of them um, so first of all we first take up this uh, bus topology and why do we take up a bus topology so this is a very simple kind of network okay so this is based on a shared broadcast link so this uh, so we want to still want to do uh, point to point communication that means there may be so many nodes a b c d etc which are um, which are connected to the network and a wants to communicate to b okay so c d e are com are connected that's all right but a specifically wants to com communicate to b so each pair of communicating node use the link for a short time. So, A uses the link for a short time to send its message to B, then after it that is over then uh, maybe C might uh, send something to B or something like that. So, other nodes ignore uh, the communication. So, since this is a shared broadcast link all the links uh, I mean share all the nodes uh, get uh, the communication. So, that is not private in that sense. So, all the nodes uh, get to uh, get that communication, but they usually will ignore this communication whereas, um, a B will sort of uh, copy this for its uh, own purpose. Now, there has to be a distributed protocol to decide who gets to use the link, okay. there has to be some protocol otherwise if A, a wants to communicate uh, with B and B wants to communicate uh, say C wants to communicate with B, uh, their communications will go and collide in the uh, shared uh, broadcast medium. So, the communication of uh, both uh, the parties of uh, that means both the pairs of nodes uh, they will get garbled. So, that uh, the I mean and sometimes actually that uh, will happen that the things will get garbled, but that is not what we uh, want to happen obviously, because we want uh, I mean A, B and E, D to get a clear signal. So, there has to be some distributed protocol to decide who gets to use the link. Now, let us see. Uh, so, what, so, for bus topology what do we require? The simplest thing is a single cable. Okay. So, there is a single cable and all the connect computers let us say are sort of hanging from this single cable. Each computer has connected to this uh, shared cable that means, somehow it is connected uh, uh, to this shared cable we may punch that cable and connect it there something like that. So, computers must synchronize and allow only one computer to transmit at a time that is a part of the uh, protocol, but as such the network is very simple network is a single uh, copper cable.
So, this is a picture of a bus, um, my picture of a bus. So, we have this uh, shared cable which is uh, sort of running like this and computers are somehow connected to this, all right. So, uh, A will communicate to B, A will simply broadcast it over this medium, B will capture it, C, D, E, etcetera, they will all ignore this. Uh, so, the network uh, may is maintained by a single cable, cable segment must end with a terminator, this is a small technical point, because otherwise what will happen is that when uh, uh, some uh, node, let us say A sends a signal on the cable, not only B, C, D, etcetera will get it, but it will get reflected from the, uh, from that uh, other end if it is not properly terminated and that will sort of linger on, so which is really some kind of a noise in the medium which we do not want, okay. So, this uses coaxial cable, um, there are two types of coaxial cable which people have traditionally used, one is a thin coaxial cable called a thin LAN and the other is a thick coaxial cable called a thick LAN and extra stations can be added in a daisy chain manner, all right. Now, this of course, I mean I must uh, also tell you that this is uh, not, um, uh, this is this technology is sort of getting outdated uh, at the moment, okay. We still have maybe some thin and thick lands here and there, but mostly people are moving out of this and the main reason why people are moving out of this is the unreliability of this uh, business of connecting the computer to the cable, because this connection is. Um, is prone to becoming loose and as soon as you have a loose connection, you know that you have a, uh, you will have a problem in communication. So, that is the main reason, uh, I mean that is one reason, there are well some other reasons also. So, that is one reason why uh, this technology is become uh, sort of obsolete these days, but still uh, if you have a shared medium, now I am, when I am talking about this technology, I mean the technology of using si a single cable but still the this business of the when you have a single broadcast medium and uh, some machines are sharing. So, this is something like a bus topology, okay. The, um, uh, the standard which is used uh, on this bus topology is IEEE 802.3, actually this IEEE, I mean although as I said that this um, technology of using a single cable is going out, but this IEEE 802.3 is uh, very much um, uh, strong even now. Only thing we have done is that we have uh, eliminated that cable and replaced it with something else, okay. So, we will discuss that later. So, thin ethernet that is the um, um, uh, uh, name of the technology when you use a thin coaxial cable. Uh, so, that is also called 10 base 2 and this is actually read like this, this 10 stands for uh, that it has a 10 Mbps speed, whereas 2 stands for that it has a maximum uh, range of say segment length of 200 meter, okay. So, why there should be a maximum, why 10 megahertz, etcetera, that uh, megabits, etcetera. So, those are uh, technical points which we, uh, I do not want to discuss right now, but that is the meaning of 10 base 2. So, this is a thin LAN, okay. Uh, so, maximum number of connections is about 30 devices. 4 repeaters may be used to a total cable length of 1000 meter. Now, this is also possible, although this is not a very uh, recommended practice. Uh, the point is that if you want to have a very long cable, one thing that will happen is that as the signal goes, travels down the line, uh, the signal will get weak and uh, as, uh, so the signal will get weak. So, you have to regenerate the signal and one way to regenerate the signal is to use a repeater over there. A repeater will simply take the incoming weak signal, amplify it and send the strong, stronger signal uh, down the line, okay. <coughs> and the maximum number of nodes you can uh, handle here is about 150. So, the thick ethernet uh, which is that other version which where you use a thick uh, coaxial cable that is called 10 base 5, this also has the same speed of 10 megabits per second. Uh, but this goes up to 500 meters, so they are used for, they were used for backbones, they are no longer used for backbones, as I said that this is also going out. They are limited to 500 meter, maximum 100 nodes per segment, so that is somewhat more than a thick ne uh, thin net and total of 4 repeaters, so 2500 meters that is also 
somewhat more than uh, thin band. Okay. Now, as a topology, the bus topology has both advantages and disadvantages. Okay. It is uh, inexpensive, very inexpensive. Of obviously, you have just simple have a simple cable. It's easy to add station. You just made another punch on this uh, cable uh, and uh, add a new station that is a new computer. It used less cable than other topologies, so the amount of cable that it uses is also much less, and maybe it works well for very small networks. So, disadvantages one thing is of course, that it is no longer recommended, which means that this uh, you will not get this parts etcetera any longer, because this is going out of fashion. Uh, and, uh, and the reason why it is uh, going out of usage is basically that it is unreliable. Okay. This is uh, much less reliable than the technology that we have today and network being so important to uh, people these days, so that we cannot really, um, we want the most reliable uh, system out there, because we cannot really uh, think of uh, allowing the <coughs> network to go down simply because some uh, wire has become loose somewhere. Okay. Then uh, of course, the other disadvantage is there is a limited number of devices that can be attached. So, that is also a problem. Uh, it is uh, difficult to uh, isolate the problems. That means, and if there is a problem, then the whole network is down and sharing the same cable uh, slows the response rate. Now, um, now, next we come to direct point to point communication. That means, this is not shared. So, this is some uh, kind of a day if I have a dedicated point to point communication. So, computers connected by communication channels that each connect exactly two computers, they are dedicated for this pair. So, this forms either a mesh. So, mesh is a complete graph is called a mesh. So, we will come to that later or some point to point network. That means, some of the pairs. So, there is a dedicated link between some pairs of nodes. It allows flexibility in communication hardware, packet formats etcetera and also provides security and privacy, because communication channel is not shared. The previous one was shared okay. and that is uh, I mean that means, that makes it very public. There is a very public. So, unless you are using some uh, um, kind of encryption etcetera. Uh, I mean anybody can uh, listen to whatever you are sending to some other third party. So, that is not uh, good. So, with point to point uh, network, the network will look somewhat like this. If you have just two nodes, so we have these two nodes or three nodes may be connected like this. If you have four nodes and if you want to connect everybody to everybody, uh, because um, for whatever reason, then we have require uh, six such cables. Okay. And uh, this of course, is a problem as you can see that as the number of nodes goes to n, the number of cables that you require is going to be. Uh, so, it could be between any two of the nodes. So, it is n choose 2, which is n choose 2, which is n into n minus 1 by 2, which is approximately equal to n square, which means that the number of cables and the total length of cables that is involved. Uh, is really going up, okay? Really going up. Although uh, at the same time, this kind of this is some other kind of cable which is usually uh, used. So this is not as expensive as the previous thin LAN or the thick LAN. So they are cheaper cables. But at the same time, the amount of cable that you require uh, becomes uh, very high. So this kind of uh, structure is not really recommended for a local area network. And that is not the only point, the, the number of um, that the number of cables or the total length of cables that is not the only point. If you notice that suppose you have let us say uh, 10 nodes uh, in a network and you are connecting everything to everything, uh, that means every node to every other node and the length of the cable for some reason let us say uh, is not an issue. But then each node will be connected to 9 other nodes, which means that in this particular computer you will require. 9 ports to which these cables will go and connect. Okay. So, that is not so easy to provide. Okay. So, this is uh, another reason why in a local area network, this kind of mesh topology is uh, not very recommended. So, we have an alternative for that uh, and we are coming to that alternative 
another reason why you cannot connect everybody to everybody else suppose they are in two different buildings all right so now the length of the cable will really become enormous because if you have a um, n cables on one side and n cable n, n uh, nodes on one side and n nodes on the other side so you have a total of n into n number of um, cables which are running between two less different buildings okay and that is uh, a lot of cables really <coughs> So, uh, we want to reduce the number of communication channels and we have to basically give up the idea of communicating directly in a LAN, all right. So, uh, which means that, um, so, which means that necessarily we share uh, the connections among many computers. So, there are ways of doing it and this term I had used in the last lecture also that is uh, multiplexing, that is when the computers take turns in a very orderly fashion okay that is called time division multiplexing so and uh, it also must include some technique for synchronizing the use that means whoever wants to use uh, the um, ch that shared channel uh, he has to wait for his turn mm. so now we come to this other topology which is uh, very um, common these days okay there are star topology a star topology uh, looks like this uh, as um, I have shown that means there is a hub central uh, hub means uh, say the center of a wheel is called a hub. So, we have a central hub and the a number of nodes are connected to this hub. Okay. Now, uh, this is a point which I will make later that there is a thing called a, a physical topology and a logical topology. Now, if you use a hub like that usually I mean um, quite often what will happen is that this is as you can see that this is a star topology this is because this looks like a star you have the hub at the center and <coughs> you have these rays going out. But the point is that this is a only a physical topology which looks like a star okay. Sometimes the hub is made in such a way that still this is a shared medium okay. Now what is the advantage of making uh, of converting uh, what was previously a bus that means a simple cable which was a shared medium of course a shared medium has its problem of security it has a problem of how to that means synchronizing the use etc uh, i have made it into a physical star how does it help well it uh, has some practical uh, it has some practical utility in the sense that although the length of the cable is more in this case but uh, the cables the cable connections uh, first of all, it is a different kind of cable, so the cable connections are much better, so much better quality, so they, not, they do not become loose so uh, very often, that is one uh, point. And the other point is that um, when, you all, when you bring all the connections together centrally, then you can handle the connections at one central point, whereas if you have a long running cable. That uh, there, so where it has become loose, that you will have to find out uh, by going around. So, that becomes a bit difficult. So, a physical star topology while still maintaining a logical uh, bus topology is still uh, an important uh, this thing. Otherwise, this hub uh, or this central uh, node, so to say, uh, may not be a shared medium at all, okay, as is often the case uh, these days. Uh, so, of course, the previous star diagram is uh, idealized. Usually, you will have something like this that means you have this, this hub uh, somewhere and then you have these different computers they are connected and there is a number which is written over there RJ45 connector that is the kind of uh, co um, connection which has become almost ubiquitous. So, this is the way we connect so, and these cables are something like your let us say the uh, kind of cables which connect your telephones okay maybe they are slightly better grade but that is the kind so they are basically very thin kind of they are called utp cables uh, that is unshielded twisted pair cable so they are basically easier to handle they are also cheaper and these connections onto these rj45 connectors on both sides they are much more reliable than the previous thin lan or thick lan but the physical topo diagram would um, maybe would look something like this
and then of course you can have an extended star topology that means different stars uh, may be there which are uh, connected to uh, I mean which are co connected in some manner that means the hubs in those stars they are connected and those hubs may be shared but they may, may not be shared medium at all. Uh, so, they may be what are known as switches. So, these switches are connected. So, so we have say if you look at this diagram mm, you have these different may be switches and from each switch we have a star connection to the different computers and the switches are connected uh, in some fashion may be I mean you can call that also a, a star. So, this is an extended star topology. Okay. And then you may have a hybrid topology, some part of the network may be on a shared medium, some part uh, may be this is some part is shared, may be some this part is not shared uh, and uh, even in some part you could also have a uh, cable, uh, uh, coaxial cable running giving a thin line or a thick line, although that is becoming less <coughs> common these days. And now we come to another topology which is also a very important uh, topology called a ring topology. And the ring topology computers are connected in a closed loop all right. Now, this has a lot of advantage. Um, first, uh, now how does it work? Well, uh, uh, the way it works is that uh, the first uh, node passes the data to the second node, the second one passes data to the third and so on. So, the data will go on hopping around the ring and what will happen is that as it reaches the destination and it will if it goes around the if it is going around in a loop it will surely reach the destination at some point of time the destination will uh, copy this. In practice there is a short connector cable from the computer to the ring so that is uh, act, uh, actual uh, technology and ring connections may run past offices with connector cable to sockets in the offices. So, this is an example of a, a ring topology actually if you look at it there are two rings here. So, one ring uh, that means uh, uh, so let us say we are using only one ring for communication by the way in a ring the data will always go in only usually the data will go in only one direction. So, this is a, a simplest kind of communication in that sense. So, if your uh, if your destination is on the wrong side then the data has to come or the whole loop and uh, then reach uh, the destination. So, there is uh, one ring for that. Now, what is the other ring for uh, what is the other ring doing? Now, there are could be various reasons for putting another ring over there and quite often we put two rings or sometimes maybe even three or four, well two is quite common. One thing one way you could use it is that you could uh, send data the other way uh, in that ring that could be one uh, difference, but a more important reason for putting two rings is that if there is a failure in the network there is a possibility of still the communication still going on ok. So, look at the picture B. Um, so, let us say one particular node has uh, come down uh, that means, it has uh, there is some problem in this um, thing. The other so, what these uh, if these nodes can um, uh, sort of sense that this uh, has really gone down and uh, so, what they will do is that they will sort of wrap the ring around ok. So, if you look at it that physically although this still lo this looks I mean if you take out the uh, one portion and uh, this uh, looks like a broken ring, but if you look at it as a single ring this is still a ring which is going through the uh, through the nodes ok. So, these nodes can still communicate although there is a uh, breakage over here ok either this node may break or this link may fail so many things uh, things may happen. So, this uh, fault tolerance is one good reason for using rings all right and as a matter of fact especially in the um, wide area network ok in the wide area network uh, we have a uh, lots of rings for example, um, let us say these telephone exchanges all right these telephone exchanges are connected in some fashion uh, using maybe fiber optic cables. So, we will be talking about all those things later on, but they usually put them on a ring because if the cable is cut at some place they can still communicate by using uh, the trick that I have just uh, shown. Okay, so, these are the this is the summary of the um, 
characteristics of a ring topology, there is no beginning or end, it is actually a ring. So, all devices have equal access to media. So, that is one uh, good thing about it that all of them uh, so get the data at some particular point of time. So, they have equal access to this media. So, in a single ring data travels in one direction only. A double ring uh, allows the fault tolerance. Each device has to wait its turn to transmit. That is, uh, that means you cannot start transmitting as soon as you want to transmit. You have to uh, take your turn. And uh, most common type is the token ring. Mm, so token ring is that uh, that has got again an IEEE standard number. That is IEEE 802.5. So in a token ring, what happens is that a token contains the uh, data. It reaches the destination. Data is extracted. Acknowledgement of receipt sent back to transmitting device. Removed. Empty token passed on for another device to use. So that is one way. Uh, how uh, um, a ring can be used for example that means that means a token is of course uh, some kind of data all right so you make a data packet with this token as well as whatever you want to send to the uh, final user so this whole packet you send over to the next node um, in the ring okay and this way it goes from it keeps hopping from one node uh, to another till in the destination, when the destination gets this packet, it knows that it, I mean, there is destination address or some kind of identification will be there somehow in that uh, whole bunch of data. So, the destination node will know that this is meant for me. So, he will extract the data, maybe he will put in an acknowledgement if you are using a protocol which uses acknowledgement and send it along the ring. So, it will go around the ring and come back to the original sender and the sender will know that this has, uh, that this data has been received. So, what it will do now is that it will remove this uh, acknowledgement also and the empty token is passed and this token keeps on circulating in the ring and whoever wants to uh, transmit, suppose uh, there is a node C let us say which wants to transmit. So, it has to wait till it gets the token. So, as soon as it gets the empty token, what it will do is that it will put on the, um, put in the uh, data that it wants to send and send it along the same way. So, ring topology has its advantages and disadvantages that means data packets travel at uh, great speed. Uh, now, one reason why data packets can travel at great speed is that this is a very synchronous operation. So, uh, so that there is no question if you remember that um, in a shared medium where um, the um, nodes are not synchronizing their action, uh, wha what might happen is that two different nodes may start transmitting at the same time and then their data will go and collide in the broadcast medium and uh, killing both the uh, communications. So, here of course, such a thing cannot happen because it is all being synchronized with the help of the token maybe or may there are other ways of synchronization. So, we will come to the all that later on. So, data packets can travel at great speeds, there are no collisions, easier to uh, find faults and sort of av avoid faults. <coughs> and terminators of course are not required like you do in an ordinary cable. The disadvantages are it requires more cable than a bus obviously um, and, a, uh, and a couple of uh, uh, um, breakdowns may bring the entire uh, ring down. Okay. Although there are some workarounds to work with smaller rings nowadays, but anyway that is not very common and this is not as common as the bus so far as the local area network is concerned. As I mentioned that in the wide area network, a ring is a very, very common as a matter of fact, a ring is a, uh, the most common uh, topology that a wide area network would use. Uh, so, the many LAN technologies that uh, use ring topology use token passing for synchronized access to the ring. The ring itself is treated as a single shared communication medium. Bits pass from transmitter past other computers and are copied by the destination. Hardware must be designed to pass token even if the attached computer is powered down. Okay. So, this is a small technicality in the sense that uh, if you could uh, do that, that means if your interface uh, uh, to the ring, that means if the interface of the um, computer to the ring 
if it can uh, sort of work independently of the computer then that would be nice because even if the computer is shut down uh, communication in the ring that means the other people's communications are not affected okay mm. so this is a picture of a token ring which is that the um, sender holding token transmit bits of frame so, computer not holding the token passes the bits as they uh, go around circulate in a very uh, uh, at a very high speed. The destination passes the bit, but it makes a copy and the sender receives uh, the bits of the frame and it uh, goes out. Okay. So, this is one way uh, the network could work. When a computer wants to transmit, it waits for the token. After transmission, computer transmits token on the ring. Next computer ready to transmit receives token and then transmits it. By the way, uh, this uh, token ring was uh, originally, um, I mean, was a uh, was a um, more common in a, as a LAN technology, uh, but then it uh, fell into disuse. First of all, the token ring, the <coughs> devices were less common, so they were more costly. That is one thing and uh, this was much much cheaper and worked quite fine for many purpose. So, the token ring as a dominant land technology went out with time, but uh, one version of it called FDDI uh, that sort of lived on and that lived on for, for the very specific advantage that the ring topology has which is that of fault tolerance and this is called FDDI. In an FDDI the ring is made of fiber optic cables. All right. Mm, so usually multi-mode fiber, mm, even single-mode fibers can be used. So they use uh, uh, fiber optic cables uh, on which a very at a very you can send data at a fairly high speed. Okay. Uh, when I say very high speed, well nowadays we get very very high speed, so it's not that fast. So uh, FDDI technology is also uh, not uh, that new. So it is uh, it is aging. So that way its speed is. I may sound less today, but when it was proposed, it was uh, taken as a very high speed. And uh, on the basic reason why, if uh, somebody would like, still like to use FDDI, is its inherent fault tolerance. So that is a technology which is used in land, and it is fault tolerant. Okay. As I said, ring technolo technology which is fault tolerant is extensively used. This is not FDDI technology, but some other technology is extensively used in WAN. But in the LAN, we have this FDDI technology, which is the full form is fiber distributed data interconnect. So, this is another ring technology. It uses fiber optics between station, transmit data at 100 Mbps, which you see that compared to 10 Mbps, which we were talking about uh, so far as um, when we were talking about the thin LAN and the thick LAN, etcetera, we were talking about 10 Mbps speed. So, 100 Mbps is a one order of magnitude higher. So, that was high when it was proposed uses pairs of fibers to form two concentric rings uh, as we have seen that in order to uh, get the fault tolerance we require two um, fibers or two rings and uh, uh, what uh, happens is that as soon as there is a fault somewhere the FDDI will automatically uh, the FDDI switch is so designed that it will automatically switch and the communication will not get disrupted. Okay. And next is that you can have hybrid topology in the sense that you can have a ring uh, which is uh, and from the various nodes of the rings stars will sort of uh, uh, stars will form. So, they will be the different hubs of the different stars and these different hubs can be put on a ring. As a matter of fact, that is a very common way why um, how FDDA is configured that means some FDDA switches are form a ring and from each of these FDDA switches, we can start other kind of technology like Ethernet, etcetera, which forms a tree like structure. And of course, the other reason why you could have hybrid uh, topology is that older networks are updated and replaced during uh, some older segments. So, as you uh, sort of replace one part of the network, you will get a hybrid kind of uh, topology. So, it combines two or diff more different types of topologies, as I said, common is star bus or star ring. Mm. Star ring uses a MAU as a multi uh, station access unit 
so which is uh, basically a part of SDTI. Next, we take up another topology which is uh, quite um, which uh, may be used, which is a mesh topology. Now, uh, when I say a mesh or a full mesh, what I mean is that a complete graph as is been shown here and as discussed earlier, a complete mesh would uh, take a lot of cable, all right. So, it would take a lot of cable. Uh, so, that is why complete mesh, uh, you may, but at the same time, if you have a complete mesh, please note that you have a lot of alternative path from any node to any other node. So, here is a uh, diagram showing let us say 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so 8 nodes and all of them are connected to everybody else. Now, if that is so, between any two nodes, you have a direct path, you have all kinds of indirect paths, okay. You have many, many paths for uh, going to the same, uh, from the same source to the same destination, all right. Which means that even if one of the links break, all of them can still communicate without any problem. But as this sort of uh, takes a lot of cable, we usually do not use this. So, what we use is a partial mesh. By in a partial mesh, some of these links would be dropped. Of course, we cannot drop so many um, links, so that uh, one of the nodes will uh, become disconnected. Then of course, you cannot, uh, uh, that uh, poor node cannot communicate. Uh, but, um, so all of them are communicated, maybe each of them are communicated to, I mean connected and e maybe each node is connected to more than one node, that is also all right. But all the links of the mesh need not be there, even in a partial mesh, you still uh, can have some form of um, redundancy. Uh, so, so, if you have some form of redundancy, that means you have some level of fault tolerance, maybe not as much as a full mesh, but you have some uh, measure of uh, fault tolerance and, and that is good and that is important. Uh, the uh, one thing of course, is that uh, such a partial mesh, when you are saying partial, that means you take a complete graph and then drop some of the links. Uh, then uh, that uh, network topology is not very well specified. That means that say if you have a regular structure like a ring, then it is easy to form a protocol like a token passing protocol that we have uh, discussed. So, here you have to have uh, some other method of uh, if you want uh, of some other um, method of sensing uh, the fault and correcting them etcetera. So, that becomes more complicated, uh, but even then this mesh topology is uh, that is partial mesh topology is useful. As a matter of fact, in many places we do not have uh, full mesh, we have only a partial mesh. Mesh topology of course, is not common on LANs, okay. They are most often used in WANs to interconnect LANs. So, uh, because as I said the WAN links usually are costly and not only are WAN links costly, um, so, naturally uh, the users of the WAN links naturally since they pay such a high cost, uh, they uh, expect a certain grade of service. So, the grade of service that is demanded of WAN links is quite high, which means that uh, I mean of course, uh, accidents may happen and some link may snap for various reasons. So, that is why in the WAN uh, service providers usually will keep alternate paths, so that if one of the paths uh, become unavailable due to some reason or due to some node failure or due to some link failure, then it can still send the traffic across the van through some alternative path. So, rings as well as partial mesh, they occur more commonly in wide area networks. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, the pros and cons of mesh topology are like this. Uh, that advantage is of course, it improves fault tolerance. That means, it is more fault tolerant maybe uh, than uh, let us say a ring uh, and it can carry more data. That means, when you are not using this alternative path for um, fault tolerance, you can uh, use these alternative paths for carrying more data. Okay. Disadvantage is of course, that they are more expensive, they are difficult to install and they are also difficult to manage and they are difficult to troubleshoot. Okay. So, these are the disadvantages of mesh topology. Now, as we have seen that each of these topologies has 
advantages as well as disadvantages. Ring is synchronization, it is a very regular structure, uh, but it may be disabled if a cable is cut. Star is easier to manage and more robust, but it requires more cables. Bus requires fewer cables, may be disabled if cable is cut and is not so reliable. Of course, a bus would not have a fault tolerance really. And uh, so, somehow in the so far as the LAN, as I said that so far as the LAN is concerned, um, uh, people are sort of converging to uh, star topology, maybe extended star topology. That means, some uh, nodes, some comp uh, computers maybe will be connected to a switch and then some other computers maybe will be connected to some other switch and then these switches will uh, get connected uh, in some fashion. So, an extended star topology is the most common topology as it, it is emerging in local area networks, whereas in wide area networks we have um, both uh, ring as well as net topology. Okay. And as I said that the physical versus logical topology, so maybe we should uh, uh, reiterate this once again uh, that the physical and the logical topologies uh, may be different. Okay. Something may look like a physical star, but it may actually be a ring. Uh, well, how is that so? Let us look at the following examples. Uh, suppose we have this as the uh, hub of the star. Okay. And suppose we have uh, these three stations, let us say A, uh, B and uh, C. Okay. And we have say cable ducts running over there, over here like this and then like this through which a number of cables are actually flowing uh, or actually passing. Now, what you might do at the hub, at the central hub is like you might connect two cables like this and then two cables like this and then two cables like this right? and because this is one central place you can do this. So, if you do that what you essentially have although this looks like a star what you essentially have is a, um, is a ring. Okay. Uh, so, what you essentially have is a ring. Similarly, um, um, you can uh, you, you can have uh, say a, any other a, any say some other kind of topology. Same similarly, maybe some uh, some part of it. Let us say you have this uh, and you have a number of cables coming in like this. Okay. Uh, now, if I uh, do it like this. Uh, well, uh, let us have four of them. Mm, so, if you have like uh, like this, say like this, suppose connections are like this and like this, and so similarly, so in all the other places, then you can actually have a mesh. Although, uh, I mean, this is all this is within one physical duct, this is within one physical duct, and this is within another physical duct going to nodes A. Uh, B, um, C and D. Uh, so, it looks very much like a star, physical star, but uh, the actual connection is something um, like a mesh. Okay. Just as I could make it a star, I could uh, make it a mesh also. Okay. So, you see the um, mm, mm, physical and the uh, logical topology, they, are, they could be different. The actual layout of a network and its media is the physical topology, whereas the way in which data accesses the medium and transmits packets is the logical topology. A glance at a network is not always revealing. Cables emerging from a hub does not make it necessarily a star topology. It may actually be a bus or a ring. Okay. This is just another point about this bus uh, about from a in a star topology and uh, that there are there is some um, piece of uh, some network box which is called a hub all right now this hub actually replaces the uh, single cable that that bus of old okay so this is again a shared medium uh, so if uh, two uh, so they are uh, sort of connected like a star okay so it has got the star connection so this is a, a even when people use hubs these days uh, 
but they do not use the, um, the single cable like the thin line or the thick line. So, this is actually th this looks like a star, uh, but depending on what kind of box it is, it could be actually a bus. All right. So, although this looks like a star, uh, if you are using a hub, it is really a bus. <laughs> Similarly, as I shown you that it could be a ring also. <coughs> Now, your uh, lo lo choice of logical topology is going to affect the physical topology and of course, the other way around the, the kind of physical topology will ha you have will also dictate the kind of logical topology that you can have. So, the, the kind of logical topology you can have will depend on two things. One is the actual physical topology, the number of cables you have etcetera plus the type of network boxes like switches, hubs uh, or whatever. Uh, that you have uh, as the nodes. So, we have to design it carefully, it may be difficult to change part way through the installation. That means, uh, that when you uh, think about uh, designing a network, putting the topology in place, uh, you have to um, have, uh, uh, so you have to design this uh, quite carefully, so that finally, you can get the logical topology that you want. So, you have to put the physical topology that way, so that our aim of course, is to get the correct logical topology. Your choice will determine on cable installation, network devices, network connections, protocols and um, of course, uh, where you <laughs> drill holes in the building. Right. And the different factors which you will uh, take into account uh, while uh, deciding on a particular topology, uh, first of all of course, um, the first thing that comes is uh, the what kind of technology you are going to use. All right. So, there are different kinds of LAN technology as I, I have mentioned a few. For example, if you are uh, using FDDI, uh, then uh, I mean you have to have a logical ring somewhere. All right. Similarly, if uh, you might if you, you may be simply using Ethernet and you may have an extended star topology. So, the kind of technology you are using that is a factor and of course, this technology will have some cost particular cost benefit. So, the, I mean the uh, as a matter of fact in a LAN you will find that apart from the network boxes, if you are uh, doing it in a greenfield kind of situation, the cost of the cable is also significant. So, a uh, cost benefit analysis of the technologies etcetera that is there. Then there is a question of scalability. That means, uh, I mean, one thing which is quite uh, sure in networks is that uh, no one is satisfied with a particular network for long. Okay, quite often what uh, people will do is that they will want to, I mean, so, sort of they will work with one kind of network, and then very soon the network will get choked, or uh, people will want more bandwidth, or more users will join. So this keeps on happening. So network is never a stable thing in any organization. So, uh, but the point is that whenever you are putting uh, some kind of topology and some kind of technology, you have to think that um, 3 years to 5 years down the line, you will have to scale the network up. Okay, it is seldom scaling down, you have to scale the network up. That means, more users will be most definitely going to join and people may uh, require um, uh, more bandwidth. All right. Now, in general, um, <coughs> what uh, will uh, happen is that uh, you may have to change a number of your uh, boxes. That means, uh, your, a number of your network boxes. Some of the boxes, for example, in an old technology, you may have had a bus uh, by putting in a hub. That means, it was a physical star, but it was a bus. Now, uh, people find that this uh, uh, hub, uh, the bandwidth which, is, which you are getting is not important. So, what you have to do is that you put a uh, switch over there and uh, ma make it a star topology kind of thing. And then later on, uh, people want more bandwidth and more people want to join. So, you have to design your physical topology that way for scalability in mind, the bandwidth capacity, the ease of installation. Uh, because how you take the cables around and uh, how you can sort of uh, scale up, down, etcetera, and how you can install it, that is always a problem in network. And the ease of finding faults, okay. 
that is one very good reason why um, uh, so we will talk more about it in the next uh, class uh, which is uh, that what kind of cables etc is used but this is a good reason to have a central cabling plan kind of thing where all cables are coming so that you can manage all your cables in one central place okay and there are standards like structured cabling etc which are used for uh, easy fault finding and maintenance okay thank you good day so today we will be talking about multiplexing multiplexing is about sharing a medium that means uh, different users are sharing the same medium for communication at the same time. Okay. Now, under the simplest condition a medium can carry one signal at any moment, because if there are two signals over there, they are going to interfere and uh, the signal will get garbled. But for multiple signals can share one medium, the medium must somehow be divided giving each signal a portion of the total bandwidth. If you remember that uh, a particular frequency range around uh, one particular frequency is called a bandwidth and this bandwidth is the re is the most valuable resource so far as communication is concerned. Uh, so, what we try to do is that we try to uh, use this bandwidth somehow to, uh, com uh, to uh, facilitate the communication between a number of pairs of uh, senders and receivers. So, that is the idea of multiplexing. So, um, there are uh, various reasons why we uh, want to um, use multiplexing and the chief one is that transmission service is very expensive. Uh, lease line, packet switch network, for example, laying of lines is, is it in itself a fairly expensive and complex proposition. And uh, once you lay a line, you really like to utilize it to the maximum. <coughs> the other thing is that uh, if you can use that for the maximum amount of com communication, multiplexing and compression techniques uh, uh, are the ones are the techniques which we use for uh, this purpose and that saves a lot of money for the business. And uh, when you can send a lot of uh, data uh, through the same line, the data capacity of the line increases, it becomes more cost effective for the company. And most data devices individually they require modest amount of data, but when the uh, when a number of users uh, their requirement are aggregated together, the sum total may be quite a substantial bandwidth. The current technique to accomplish this includes frequency division multiplexing, wavelength division multiplexing, time division multiplexing and code division multiplexing. We will look at uh, uh, many of uh, some of these at least. So, let us see. So, this is the scheme of uh, multiplexing. You have one multiplexer uh, and then you have n inputs on uh, one side. Uh, so, these n inputs are coming to the same multiplexer, they are getting mixed up in some fashion and they are being sent over the same physical link. And on the other side, depending on in which fashion you have put them together, they are sort of separated into different lines. So, these now uh, these different lines on the right, they can now go to different recipients. So, just as on the left we have different senders and we have different receivers over here. So, the um, so a number of sender receiver pairs is utilizing the same uh, physical link in between. <coughs> the alternative to multiplexing of course, would be direct point to point connection. This has a number of uh, problems. First problem is of course, that you need those lines that we were talking about. You need line for each device, you need a large amount of wiring if on uh, if they are on different floors. Uh, and another point important point is that you need a lot of I O ports on the uh, computer side, which really is not uh, feasible. Okay. You may have a, a few I O ports, but uh, you cannot have uh, hundreds of I O ports there. I mean at least it is very difficult to have hundreds of I O ports there. So, uh, that is also another bottleneck that we wish to address. Another approach could be, so <coughs> this is a somewhat older approach, 
um, uh, which is a, that of a multi drop line. So, host polls machines to see who wants to send and then uses the same line saves I O ports total communication load is not greater than the data rate of the line. So, these are the actually the simple approaches. So, using a, a multiplexer approach, so all the devices they are um, their, their, their data is multiplexed on one side sent through one line and the number of lines in equal to the number of lines out link carries multiple channels of information. Original signal will be this, this uh, restored. Of course, I mean if the um, noise is very high and I mean there is a limit to this uh, how much you can restore if the noise is very high then it will not be possible then we will know because the minus 10 volts can also become 8 volts say if in case of a spike and then uh, whatever restoration we do will be a wrong one. So, we will lose some information there will be some distortion uh, and some loss of information would be there that is there. So, there is always a limit, but in the case of uh, digital signals it is more uh, fault tolerant uh, or uh, resistant to noise uh, more resilient compared to analog signals. Okay. Hmm. So, we can correct errors in transmission uh, that is another advantage of digital signals. Uh, so, what we do is that we add a few bytes of error checking information and can ask for retransmission if an error is detected. I mean a very I will give you a simple example uh, for, for example, suppose we are uh, sending groups of uh, 8 bits called bytes. Okay. Now, what we can do is that associated with each byte we can add an extra byte and this extra byte uh, would uh, make the let us say the number of ones in the whole uh, 9 bits to be odd. Okay. This is an example of let us say odd parity so called odd parity. Now, if at the receiver end we find that the number of ones have become even, we know that there must some bit must have flipped that means, uh, some bit uh, must have instead of a 0 we got a 1 or instead of a 1 we got a 0 it must have happened otherwise because the number of bits was supposed to be odd. And of course, by adding 1 bit we can always uh, dictate that the number of bits in the original uh, that means, sending station was odd. So, in that case there the receiver may request the sender to retransmit that uh, whole bunch once again uh, hopefully there will not be a error next time. So, some kind of uh, so this is of course, a very primitive kind of uh, error checking there are more sophisticated error checking uh, which is uh, employed in networks and communication. So, this uh, such error uh, checking and co even correction of errors at the receiver end if you are 